Hiya then folks, welcome back. We're still boating on a budget. It's me, the tight Yorkshireman. Dawn's not with me today, she's at work, but she'll be here later on in the video. If we can have a little flashback before we start though, you'll probably remember on the last vlog that I'm sure you've already watched, I said this. But we do have to be a bit careful while we're doing it because obviously if we just literally go at it like Taz of Tasmania, we'll end up with fiberglass insulation and bits of wood everywhere and then it'll take twice as long to clear it up. Hmm, yeah, right, we've got to now promise not to tell Dawn about this. Because what happened is, a couple of days after that, I came down after work on my own. Again, Dawn were working. There's something about this Dawn working and me not, isn't there, but anyway. Yeah, I came down on my own. By that stage it were already dark and I bought a little work light, which is perfectly all right, but it does only illuminate kind of a couple of meters in front of it. So I got cracking, nice and steady, took a few bits down, piled them up, put a few more bits down, piled them up. And then I did kind of go, I can't really see anything where I'm piling stuff. So I went a bit Taz of Tasmania, and look. Eek. So my first job now is, get all this lot tidied up before I can do anything else and also get it tidied up so that Dawn don't see what I did so come on then, let's get cracking we'll get this bit done and then we'll start stripping the rest of it out half the battle we're tidying up whilst doing a job like this on a narrow boat is actually getting the stuff out the boat because obviously the doors and even the side hatch aren't very big at all. So you can't just put things in boxes and bags and carry them straight out. Everything has to go out piece by piece and then be put into boxes and bags and took off to the tip. It might sound like I'm whinging, which I probably am, but it does actually take quite a bit longer than what you'd imagine. It's just a pity then that this is speeded up footage and I wasn't actually able to work like that. I'd have had the job done in no time. Right, well that's got it tidied up. Well, sort of tidied up anyway. So we'll move on to the next job, which is getting these last boards off around the bottom which obviously behind there is the insulation. So I've got my bags ready, got my dust mask to hand, we'll get them boards unscrewed, that insulation pulled out, and just while we're here, you'll see behind that board there that I already broke a little bit off the other night, that's the water tank, the, uh, the cold water tank, obviously uh, normally hidden out of sight, but once we pull these boards off, we'll be able to get a good look at it and check that it's all right and also get an idea as to what sort of size it is. Although this has speeded up footage, I think it does show the importance of having the right tools. As you can see there, them screws come out in no time with the cordless screwdriver. If I were trying to do that by hand, I reckon it'd have easily took 10 times as long. So although I've not got any fancy tools, and certainly nothing too expensive, I probably will actually do a vlog at some stage, just running through what tools I have got, and how we use them. Because I think that might be quite interesting, especially for anybody who's thinking of doing a similar project. Just give them an idea as to what sort of tools they're likely to need along the way. So, about an hour or so after arriving this morning, kind of got it tidy and got them last boards off and that insulation out. Didn't like doing that job. That really is Dawn's job. But speaking of Dawn, remember our secret. It looked like that all along. It weren't full of junk and bits I just pulled off. Next job though is getting the toilet out. And I know we said this series were going to be warts and all. But I think there does have to be 
just a little bit of censorship. And I really don't think you want to see me taking a toilet out. I mean, bearing in mind, we've not really used it since we've had the boat. And I'm not saying it were left in a bad condition, because it weren't, it were nice and clean. But you just never know what's going to be in them pipes and things. So, I'll get that toilet out, and then I'll come back to you. So that's where the toilet was. As you can see, there's just the pipes that fed the water to it and also took the waste away. Not removed those yet because the tank is down there. Obviously there are the pumps. I think the tank itself is sort of just about under this board here. And obviously I don't want to start taking the boards up until we're ready to set the floor completely out. So uh, for now, I'm just gonna block those pipes up, stop any nasty smells coming up from them. And other than that, just drop that side down there. The gunnels was hanging off, so I've just dropped it down. And as you can see, that insulation that will be behind there is just full of black mould. So that wasn't very good. Next job then is to drop the gunnels from that side. Clear these bags out of the way, all the bags of insulation. Because not even the tight Yorkshireman's going to reuse them. Those bits of carpet, what I'm actually going to do is just cut them up into small squares. Because obviously they're not going back in the boat. But as you might have noticed when I did the blacking of the hull, uh, I was using some of those, some of the old bits of carpet just to kneel on and things. So I'll do the same with that, just cut them up into squares a couple of foot. And then uh, if need be, can kneel on those as jobs are going on. And then that's the last bit of wall that was the, uh, the bathroom wall. So we'll get all these bits cleared out. And then we can start down that end. But I think that end might be tomorrow when I've got done with me. Because as we know, that means more cups of teas and more bacon butties. Morning Dawn. Morning. How are we today? Fine, thank you. Are we ready for a nice fun day? Sort of. Sort of. Can I have my brew first? You certainly can. We always need a brew. <laughs> so what do you think to uh, the work I've been doing then over the, the last few days while you've not been here? You've uh, done quite well. You kept it quite tidy to be fair. You see, I hadn't, you knew I'd keep it tidy. It's yeah. tidier than I thought it were going to be. Never doubt me, never doubt me. So do you know what we've got on the uh, the job list today? Apart from making a brew that is. No. No? Right, little run through. If we turn this way and look up, we need to take them down. <laughs> them big ceiling panels that have got loads of insulation behind them. Nice. So it'll be dust masks on, gloves on, and then I, I might need to go and do something. I might just leave you to that. It's all right, isn't it? You, you'd be fine with that, wouldn't you? I'll just. Just nip off. You can't, you're grounded, Boris said. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> Bo Boris has just grounded yeah. us all. <laughs> so does that sound like a fun day then, Dom? Yeah. Yeah. What you really mean is, you wish you were in the pub having a few pints. Wish I were in bed. <laughs> <laughs> right, so, kettle's on. Let's have a brew. And then let's get cracking. So as we're starting to pull the ceiling down, we're kind of hoping to work along bit by bit. And as we release it, we'll get the worst of it out while it's still up there, so it's not floating about and getting all over the place. But these sections are quite big. So I think there's gonna get a point where we're gonna work along and then eventually just pull the whole lot down. That'll be fun. So that's the first section of the ceiling dropped. That was fun, weren't it, love? <laughs> Yeah, there weren't really a, a technique for that. It would just unscrew bits, pull bits, and... Oh, look at this. 
eventually it came down. So we'll tidy that section up and we'll get on with next section. Again, Dawn doing her favourite job, collecting up manky old insulation. I'll be glad when all of this lot's gone, won't we? Yeah, but look at my kitchen. To decipher that, she said, yeah, but look at my kitchen. Don't worry, love, kitchen's coming out soon. You can have a nice new shiny one. Well, budget permitting anyway, let's not go getting carried away. <laughs> I saw your eyes light up then with the... The thought of all shiny new stuff. Yeah, so we've uh, obviously, as you can see, we've stripped the bit behind the cooker there because we needed to get that bit down because obviously that's where the ceiling bit that we're going to drop is. And I've started unscrewing sort of the screws in the centre of that ceiling. Just need to do the ones along the edges and then drop that down. And yet more insulation. I'm surprised with the amount of insulation in there this boat ever needed any form of eating. But then I'm also surprised with the amount of black mould and dust and muck and rotten timber we've found that anybody in there could actually breathe. Just as we were about to do this, I did say this might be like one of them cartoons that you see. You know where somebody's sat on a branch and they start cutting through it with a saw and ultimately the branch they sat on is the bit that they cut off. How else do you pull a ceiling down that's above your head without actually dropping it on your head? That's today's thought of the day. Get that section of the ceiling down then. And once again, Dawn doing a favourite job. Putting manky old mould ridden loft insulation into black bags. Now we've got the internal ceiling dropped, we can see the actual roof and the structure and kind of how it were made. As you see, it's obviously, as we know, fiberglass that's built around timber battens that all combined make it really strong. And as we can see, having a little look around, there isn't any actual real damage as such. Obviously, the cracks and things that are on the outside must just be on that outer skin. So, in theory, I suppose we could replace and repair this bit, but I think we've already decided that especially if we're gonna to have to work around things like these hatches and things this roof is coming off and we're gonna start afresh right so what we're gonna do now is just take up this first section at floor just so that we can see roughly how it's looking and then uh, might give us an idea as to what we're gonna to need to do for the rest of it so we'll crack on with that as you can see they weren't very well fastened down and they were all starting to rot
that section at flooring up, first thing you'll notice is, if you've ever owned this boat before, and you were missing a flip flop, there's one just there for you. If you want to get in touch with us, you can come and reclaim it. <laughs> <laughs> Don't know how long that's been there, but it's part of the boat, I think. But now, obviously, we can see under here, it is a little bit rusty, which does look pretty alarming. But I am assured, 10 millimetres of rust, obviously a centimetre, a bit short of half an inch, is equivalent to one millimetre of metal. So, that looks pretty bad, but in actual fact it is just the top surface. Where, obviously this is the water tank, the, the water feed pipe, sorry, from the water tank. And this is where any condensation or anything collects. So, like I say, looks a bit bad, but once we've scraped it, and it'll be getting treated with a, a rust treatment and then painted again. Like it obviously has been in the past with this red paint, back in October 1980, uh, 1998, and believing the last time it was done, we'll do the same again. And seeing as we've already done the outside of the old when we blacked it, sorting the inside out, should be good to go. Then as we progress further down the boat, this is where the bathroom was, and obviously under there were the various pumps to pump the water for the hot water, the cold water, the toilet flush, etc. And if we look down here, this is just completely rotten. That was obviously the one of the main floor cross members. So again, just to reiterate, I think it does show it were well overdue for rebuilding. Well, that's another day done then. We had fun, worked hard. Yeah, it's been another uh, another interesting day. So you don't realise just how much work it does take no. to strip it out, no. do you? When, so when you first think, we'll strip the boat out, you think, oh, hour or two. Take a day. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Maybe a day with a couple of brews and a bacon sandwich in between, but but now so. Uh, We've got a we've got a good portion done. We've got the main the main bones of it out, haven't we? Yeah. We've got part of the floor up. We've been able to have a look at that. So uh, next time I think it'll be take the rest of the floor up, get them ceiling panels cut and out of the way, and then we can really uh, really have a look at the structure. I think one thing that we probably have found though is imagine if you bought a boat that's been refurbished in the past. Does it not make you think? Have they just covered all these things up that we've seen? You know, all the bits where it's the rotten wood and the mouldy insulation and things. Yeah, because we could have made it look good, couldn't we? Oh, yeah, yeah. And, and I don't even mean kind of by bodging it as such. But, no. You know, looking at the bits, some of it you'd have just thought, oh, yeah, a new bit of wood over that and that'll look lovely. And, yeah. But hidden behind it were rotten wood and... Nastiness. Mouldy insulation. So, so yeah, hopefully you've enjoyed this episode. Have we enjoyed this episode? Of course we have. <laughs> <laughs> if you have... Give us the thumbs up. Also, subscribe to the channel. That'll get you the, the, the notifications. I must need a brew. I'm struggling to talk here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Hit in the uh, subscribe button. I'll get the notifications. Especially if you ding that little bell. I'm going to go and get a brew. And we'll carry on next time, won't we? We certainly are. So we'll see everyone soon, folks. Bye-bye.